Joe Cook is in Texas. I mean, his website is inside Texas. I'm just going to make the assumption he's in Texas, I guess. He joins us now on the Farm Bureau phone line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team. I got to talk about Texas. We, we've, we've talked to all these national people, Joe. We've talked to a bunch of people here in Mississippi. Nobody from the state of Texas yet. It was about this time a week ago that this news was starting to leak out. When did you first learn what was happening? What was your just your first gut reaction to it? So I first learned about it uh, about the same time y'all did, whenever the, the Houston Chronicle published its report. Uh, and that's when I kind of first caught wind of it. One of my our, our managing partner at Inside Texas, Eric Naleen, he kind of dropped in with some tidbits a little bit later in the afternoon and shared some uh, relaying that he had with some sources uh, that said that this has been something that's been talked about for, for several months. And I think a lot of other outlets have kind of confirmed that, that, you know, this wasn't something done in the span of, you know, three or four days. There's been some talks going on a few months. So, uh, but luckily, you know, I, I, I was kind of able to, you know, experience that day on, on the college football web and college football news cycle kind of in the same amount of awe as, as everybody else was able to. We all know that the big reason anybody makes a move like this is going to be financial. You know, that Texas and Oklahoma both see an opportunity to make a lot more money and to secure their, their futures in, in the strongest conference. But beyond money, there has to be at least one or two reasons from the Texas perspective. What are those reasons? Well, I think what I, one argument that I've been making is that you just have to look at the NFL draft results every single year. Uh, the SEC, without a doubt, is the, the conference that puts the most players in, it, in the NFL. And as we all know, football is what basically drives all these different athletic departments. So you want to put together the most competitive football product, and the Big 12 really does not offer that. It's Texas, it's Oklahoma. Now, you're not going to find anybody who loves what Chris Kleiman's doing at Kansas State uh, or what Matt Campbell's doing at Iowa State more than me. I'm a college football junkie, and I can watch those two teams play all the time. But not everybody is like me, like us, who will watch anything as long as there's 11 men aside and a ball on the ground. Uh, and, and that includes NFL scouts. Yeah, they'll find you, but uh, they keep players and kids want to go where the best competition is they know that's in the SEC, and Texas didn't really see a way forward in the future on the recruiting trail uh, without being in the SEC. Joe, if you like beer and barbecue with your feelings on college football, we could be best friends. I'll just go ahead and tell you that. Uh, Texas is taking most of the heat in this situation. It feels like all of the ire is drawn at Texas, and Oklahoma just sort of seems to be sitting there in the background just letting Texas sort of sort of take the uh, the heat. Why isn't Oklahoma getting more attention in this? Or why is Texas getting the most attention, I guess I could ask? One, and, and maybe this is my bias, considering I, I went to Texas and covered Texas, uh, the, the, the nation and its media kind of likes the burnt orange punching bag. It is one of the, the biggest brands that over the past decade has not been doing very well in football. So it, it, it is an easy target, and Oklahoma's had football success to back their – back up whatever they're able to do and their kind of claim that they'll be able to hang in the SEC. Uh, the other, and I think there is the truth is in the middle on this, is they're perceived, this is perceived as the second conference that Texas is, is you know, doing away with. Uh, a lot of people like to discuss that the, the Southwest Conference was broken up as a result of, you know, Texas. Uh, well, the Southwest Conference was a one-state league, and as we've seen over the past, you know, 20, 30 years, those aren't sustainable. Uh, so they think that they broke up not only the, the Southwest Conference, kind of made the Big 12 kowtow to what they wanted to do in the creation of the Longhorn Network, and then they go ahead and leave the Big 12. So I guess nationally the perception in Texas of um, its middling results and, and big bravado is basically turning another conference into history uh, at its own, you know, just for its own self interest and not in the interest of others obviously here in mississippi we're familiar with in-state rivalries mississippi state and Ole miss there's no love loss between those two schools but i've never really seen anything like what texas a&m has been doing over the past week and, and the way that basically they've just whined and complained throughout this whole process you say you went to texas i'm gonna give you a, a blank slate here my friend why is a&m acting the way they are 
Oh man, you're trying to get me to describe Aggies, and uh, I don't think I have. I don't think y'all have enough hours in the day for me to be able to do that. Uh, it, it's it's. I, I don't want to come off as too much of a homer, but it, it's kind of the culture, and I think even Texas A&M's own athletic director embodied it. Uh, y'all know Ross Bjork went from Ole Miss and then went to Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. He was at big or SEC media days when all this broke, and I think he said it better than any Longhorn and any, anybody else could. Their identity, their claimed identity, was being the only SEC team in Texas. And that just went up in smoke. Uh, Texas a and is going to be a good program this year. They have won plenty of recruiting battles with Texas, with even Oklahoma, as a result of being the SEC team that's close to home. That pitch just went away, and it just went away without them being able to do that much. So I understand why they may be upset in that regard, but at the same time, it's still pretty interesting because you know that even if you know the truth is somewhere on the middle of the story of them knowing about it or not knowing about it, it means they got caught flat-footed. And I know that Ole Miss and Mississippi State and other SEC teams have about 10 years of experience with the Aggies. That's just kind of what they've been doing ever since uh, the the uh, 1870s. It, it's kind of par for the course for them. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> I, I love college football rivalries more than just so about much for thing. dancing around that one, huh? Yeah, he, he, no, he nailed it. He nailed it. Uh, Joe, what's going to happen in the Big Twelve? The other schools? Uh, it, it, its days are numbered. Um, I think without its two biggest brands, even if they try to add schools like BYU or Houston, or South Florida, and Central Florida, it just doesn't hold the – that those, that group of teams doesn't hold the sway uh, that, you know, major media entities like Fox and ESPN will pay big bucks for. And that's the biggest issue. So what's going to happen is – I know Texas is, uh, and, and Oklahoma in their statements talked about 2025. I think we all kind of know that that's for legal purposes – Playing as a lame duck for three years in a row will only cause some bad things for for all sides involved. So it's in everybody's best interest to try and get out as soon as they can. For teams like Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, and Iowa State, they're probably having some sleepless nights, but they have a good chance of being able to find a power landing spot, whether that's the PAC uh, or whether that's uh, the Big Ten. Kansas Bass. Kansas, thanks to its basketball program, is in a pretty strong spot. That's a that's a high profile brand, probably a top three program in, in you know the sports history. That's always going to draw some sort of eyes and always has a fervent fan base. I, if I were a TCU fan or a Baylor fan or a Kansas State fan, I would be scared out of my mind right now. Uh, an old legend in, in Texas is that. Uh, Baylor was only admitted to the Big 12 when the Southwest Conference was collapsing thanks to the strong influence of a a Baylor grad governor named Ann Richards. Now, that's Mm -hmm. only kind of partially true. There were some other uh, lieutenant governors and other legislatures that made sure Baylor and uh, uh, Texas Tech were able to find a home in the Big 12. The governor of Texas right now is a huge longhorn. The speaker of the House of Representatives in Texas right now is a huge longhorn. There's no politician with enough sway, no matter what a state senator may introduce into the Texas legislature, uh, to overcome this. And there's nobody with enough who has a big interest in mind who's going to be able to do much about this. I think the same holds for TCU. I think the same kind of holds for Kansas State as well. So you sort of hit on it right there, you know, and we've got about maybe 60 seconds left. If you had to make a guess, what is the year where where Texas and Oklahoma are playing SEC football? I think in everybody's best interest, it's next season. Uh, I think the very latest in everybody's best interest has to be that 23 season. And this, this isn't something that for all involved is going to be good if it carries all the way out to 2025. It's going to even, you know, it's going to cause irreparable harm to the brand of the Big 12 and 
it's going to make things more difficult for Texas. Somebody joked that they're both the nicest crowd that each Texas and Oklahoma see this year. Maybe each other in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. So, <laughs> uh, I, I think everybody's best interest is that this happens is by uh, 2022 for that season. There's some TV contracts that need to be worked out, but I don't think it gets this far without having a good idea of what needs to be done there. We'll see very soon. Joe Cook from InsideTexas.com. Thanks so much for your time, man. I really, really appreciate it. Hey, appreciate it. Uh, Whenever y'all need me on for Texas stuff.